Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my new tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I made my iPhone hologram video. And I've had a few people ask me so here's a basic tutorial. Now I lost the original footage so this is the actual completed one but I'll just show you the steps on this because yeah I don't have time to refilm it. But anyway, so to start things off what I did is I just filmed me holding my iPhone and uh, the first thing that you'll need to do is motion track the iPhone so all the gadgets follow it like they do in the video. So to do this you can use just the inbuilt motion tracker in After Effects or you can use a more advanced one. Now for my version I just use the motion tracker which comes with After Effects, uh, just the one in After Effects because I didn't have anything better at the time. But if I could do it now I'd probably use Mocha for After Effects since I only learned how to use it the other day. Anyway, I'll show you how to do it with uh, the After Effects one. So what you need to do is double click on your footage and if the tracker isn't here you just go Window and make sure Track is ticked and it should pop up down here. And now go to the start of your footage. I can't because mine's got the fade in. So I'll just do it from here and I'll show you what to do. And click Track Motion and you want to click Position and Rotation and then pretty much the places I used were these two here. So you pretty much want high contrast points or points that stand out and uh, they should work pretty good and then just click edit target so I'll lay a new null object and then set your null object as your target and click uh, track forward or analyze forward and then click apply and it should come up with all these uh, keyframes which will be in there and I'll just do it now quickly and so that's what it should look like and just watch it as it goes to make sure that the points are sticking roughly to it it doesn't need to be perfect for something like this but the more accurate it is the better so I'll just leave mine there so click stop and apply but if you're doing this, leave it for the whole time. I'm just trying to keep this pretty short. So you can see these keyframes here and all down here which follow this. So we can minimize these and yeah, that null object should be stuck to the, one of the points. Okay, so now what I did was create the little gadgets that you see here. So I've pretty much got an inbox, a clock and battery life. And I did these just by creating a bunch of solids. So lay a new solid. And we can scale this down a bit. And we want to go up here to our rectangle tool, click and hold and go to our rounded rectangle tool. And make sure our white solid is selected. And just double click. And then go down here to your mask and just highlight it and press Control D to duplicate it and you want to set this one to subtract and then press F to bring up the feather and then feather the bottom one in and you'll see that's pretty much how I created that inbox one it's just a light barrier and then I duplicated that put it below and scaled it up and that's how I created the inbox gadget and then uh, the best thing to do would be uh, set them both to add if you go down here to your blending mode it'll say add and normal just make sure you change both of them to add and that just makes them glow quite a bit and then if you go over to your effects and presets and type fill and drag that onto both your layers you can pretty much just choose whatever color you want so choose a nice uh, green color and then just copy that one by highlighting it control C and go down to your white solid 2 and control V and it'll make them both the same color and yeah then what you can do is pretty much highlight them both go layer pre-compose and set that to add sorry and there we go so now we've got that on a single layer and then what we do is make that a 3D layer add motion blur by clicking those two options on and then we need to link it to our null object so get your parent tool here which is the spiral and click and drag it to your null object and that gets all the keyframes from your camera track and copies them to your uh, pre comp here which is now our first gadget so now if we go here I'm 
to this point where the keyframes are, it should follow. And then it's just pretty much basic scaling and positioning. So we'll scale it down a bit and rotate it into however we want. And there we go. So as you can see, that follows that. And then all I did was go back into here and say get your text tool and type inbox scale that right up and uh, you'll want to copy the fill from that and you'll see if we go back to here it's in there like that and then you can just pretty much type whatever you want and it follows along and yeah if your motion track worked it should work pretty good and that's all I'll show you for the gadgets it's just pretty much a repeat for everything you can come up with your own gadgets just yeah and now for the screen all I did was pretty much the same as the gadget but uh, what you'll need to do is get a new solid and we'll name this screen sorry if I'm going through this fast it's just a lot of stuff to cover in a short tutorial and we want to make it 3D motion blur you want to add motion blur to stuff when you're doing this because it just makes it look a lot more uh, natural because if your camera catches motion blur and your gadgets don't have motion blur it'll really stand out and won't look too good so anyway um, we want to pretty much lower the opacity on our screen by pressing T to bring up the opacity and just dropping it down and this just helps us line it all up and go there and now what I did for this was got the pen tool make sure our screen is selected I'll just bring up where the keyframes are and then created a mask around the screen and it's important that your screen layer is selected for this otherwise it will stuff up and then we want to press M and it will bring up the mask path click the stopwatch and go forward a few frames and then just readjust your points and then pretty much keep doing that for the whole time and it should end up looking pretty damn good so you can also skip quite a fair way and just do it and hope for the best but if you do it frame by frame it's guaranteed to look pretty good so if you look it's, it's pretty good right there so if we raise the opacity up to full and we'll probably feather this out about 5 pixels by pressing F to bring up the feather properties and that way it just hides any maybe 10 it just helps hide any like uh, problems that happen I don't know as you can see it didn't work too well towards the middle here but you get the basic idea of it and the more time you spend on things obviously the better it's going to look and then if we hide our screen you can see my screen under here it's got some particles a few gadgets on the actual screen and I just pretty much did the exact same thing I did for the screen but did a gradient on it and then the exact same thing I did for the gadgets but placed them over the screen so you can see this effect wasn't too hard to achieve it was just pretty much one technique repeated quite a few times for everything and um, got a bit of bad static as it comes in and then all the gadgets kind of fly out and the way I did that was just keep frame of position and rotation into that little circle that you see on the screen so that's pretty much all there is to doing that iPhone and it just takes quite a bit of time but yeah you should be fine if you just use those simple steps and repeat it so good luck and yeah thanks for watching and subscribe if it helped you see you later